Hi Bo Bakers, welcome to my very first Halloween special. A few weeks ago I made a monster cookie trilogy and my death by chocolate cupcakes. This week we are going to make bloody caramel apples. This recipe actually came to me in kind of a strange dream where I took a trip home to Ireland and I thought I would share it with you. So let's get baking. Let's get started with the apples and then I'll tell you about my dream. I like to use these Gala apples because they kind of have a nice traditional apple shape and your end product is going to look really nice. Now because all apples are different and are so unique, some of them can be a little bit knobblier than others and actually won't stand, but they're going to look really good. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to saw off the bottom to make a flat base and then they'll stand perfectly for your caramel apple. So to make our caramel apples big and bold, we're going to first dip them in white chocolate. You can melt your white chocolate in a double boiler or you can gently melt it in the microwave for around 30 seconds at a time and just check it, stir it and just make sure it doesn't burn. When you're coating something in white chocolate, it's always a good idea to add a little bit of flavorless oil because it just makes it glide over your product so much easier and leaves no streaks. To coat your apples in the white chocolate, generously spoon it over and let the excess drip off. Now you can see why adding the oil is really important to the chocolate because it just gives your apple a really smooth finish. Once your apples are dipped, set them on a tray lined with parchment paper so any of the excess chocolate will just drip straight onto the tray. You're going to need to set for around 45 minutes just to make sure that they're nice and hard when you go to add on the caramel. So let me tell you about my really strange dream and where this recipe came from. I travelled to my family home in Ireland with my friend Alicia from Mind Over Munch to bring you a special episode of Bigger Boulder Baking. Alicia, are you recording? We are ready. Okay, great. Hi, Bowl Bakers. Since it's almost Halloween, I am here in Ireland with my fellow creator, Alicia, to bring you my biggest and boldest creation yet, my family secret recipe. So let's get baking. The problem was my dear departed Aunt Buffy took the recipe with her to the grave. Okay, I'm just gonna have to improvise from what I know. I'll add some sugar, some flour, Still not right. Then I remembered Aunt Buffy's personal psychic, Madame Karen. She could help me communicate with her. Gemma, what do you seek? I want to talk to my auntie. I need her help. We made contact with Buffy, but she warned me against making the recipe. She said it was too dangerous and if made wrong, could unleash a curse. But I had to make it anyway. It is my biggest and boldest creation yet. It looks amazing. You guys are gonna love this. And then something went horribly wrong. So let's make our blood caramel. In a heavy bottom saucepan, add in your sugar and your water. Turn your caramel on medium low heat and then just mix until the sugar has dissolved without letting it simmer. You don't want it to simmer yet. Go around the pot and scrape down any sugar granules that are on the side. Now that you see the sugar has dissolved, turn the heat up to medium and let it simmer gently. Usually when making a caramel, you want a nice dark caramel color because that's where all the flavor is. But when you're using this recipe, we actually want a light caramel because we want it to be a really vibrant red. We're gonna let a caramel simmer for around four to five minutes till you get a nice light brown color. So back to that dream. I had made my biggest and boldest creation but indeed the recipe was cursed. It poisoned Madame Karen, and even Alicia couldn't resist. Gemma, I'm really hungry. Are you sure? You ate a really big lunch. She was cursed with an insatiable hunger. <laughs> now for the blood. When your caramel reaches this light color, add in your red food dye and get ready to whisk it in. And there you have it, Luz caramel. Now prepare your apples by cutting off the stem and then putting in a cake pop or lollipop stick. For an alternative stick, I'm gonna use a branch to make it look like the apple is still on the tree. Pierce your apple with your lollipop stick to create the same hole. Now that you've made a hole for it, you can add in your branch and it is gonna give a much more natural, kind of spooky feel to your apple. It's not gonna be as strong as a lollipop stick, but it's gonna look fantastic. Our apples are set, so let's add the blood. Carefully spoon your caramel over the apples and always take care when working with caramel because it's very hot. Work quickly because it does set fast. 
If your caramel starts to harden while you're using it, don't worry. Stick it back on the stove over low heat. When it loosens up, it's ready to use again. So back to my dream. Alicia seemed possessed by the recipe. I tried to escape, but she was relentless. Ah! Jello! I'm hungry! You need to feed me! But then, well that's when the dream ended. How did it get so dark? How could Buffy think that this recipe is too dangerous? Sinful, yes, but dangerous, I don't think so. Hi, Bo Bakers. Buffy was right. This recipe is too good not to share. If you're hungry, you will just die for it. Like it, share it, and I'll see you back here every Thursday for another bigger, bolder baking. Click here to watch more House of Horrors videos made at the YouTube spaces around the world with legendary entertainment.